Hello and welcome to the First Issue Club. We're your weekly comic book reading podcast where just like Sue Storm, we love a good read. It's May the 4th, an important day in nerddom and we're ready to, I don't know, be excited about it. Maybe talk. I we I, I haven't prepped any Star Wars stuff. We'll try to work it in when we can. Talk about comic books. We will. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there it is. Yoder's on the show. What's up, dudes? <laughs> and he's got that TMNT flair. We love so much about him. I hit a couple J's all the way in. He's the greenest guy in town. <laughs> Not just for the skin. Uh, I'm Mike D. I'm Greg. And I'm Vargas. Oh, one out, not here for a couple oh, weeks and you just stumbled forget, on that. Forget your cue immediately. Forgot my cue and my name for <laughs> a hot second. Hey, at least you didn't like say that you were also Mike D. That would have been a, a giant foible. That, first of all, that joke, pedantic. Oh, We're above that. Sorry. Secondly, had I been uh, well rested, I probably would have done that. Okay. <laughs> Working on two hours of sleep here, boys. Why? Aye, aye, aye. Well, because we had a, another baby. Oh. Another sweet little uh, sack of potatoes we call Vincent. I don't understand. Famously, babies let you sleep all the time. <laughs> you see, that's the thing. I'm getting too much sleep. Oh, <laughs> so now I I'm like, you know, Got when it. you pass the threshold mm. of like sleep and you're just like, I've done it too much. Yeah. I'm, I'm tired again. Got it. So that's where I'm at. Understood. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be back. Uh, Raising two kids is buck ass wild, but the world keeps turning. Well, one's older. Just have him raise the smaller one. We're trying to, but um, <laughs> unlike gorillas and other uh, advanced primates, human toddlers don't really want to rear children. I'm sorry. I'm done belittling <laughs> your, your your second fatherhood status. Congratulations, Greg. That's okay. My parking didn't improve or anything. It's just, <laughs> just another tax, just tax deduction. Nice. <laughs> Well, it's a big week for comic book fans. We've got free comic book day mm -hmm. happening tomorrow, uh, as of the release of this podcast anyway. Yep. So right, Saturday, right? Or is it Sunday It's this Saturday. Year? It's Saturday. Okay. May 6th. So get in line early. Show bring, up to your store and just start grabbing stuff. Bring canned food items to yeah. break windows. This is more of a looting day <laughs> than free comic books. Yeah. Every comic book is free. Mm -hmm. Cash register is free. <laughs> Correct. The shoes on other people's feet are free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just go crazy. Uh -huh. This day is for us. Everything is free. Yeah, honestly, it's the purge. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, so they always do this close, as close to May 4th as they can, mm -hmm. whichever weekend hits that that day the, the closest. Um, that's got to be great for Marvel to just be like, well, now that they we're own, comic sure, books, yeah. we own the Star Wars universe. Um it's just like promo frenzy for them. It's corporate synergy at its finest. Mm -hmm. it, indeed it is. If only these books weren't being given away for free, they <laughs> could make a, a couple bucks. Yeah, if only it was double price comic book day, <laughs> then it really would be capitalism. And now that energy is out in the universe, and it will happen. <laughs> um, well, first, we're gonna, I think we're going to chop it up about comic book news like we always do before we get to our first issues. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you guys have anything, but I'll say I saw... That Spider-Man 2, the video game, is getting a comic book prequel. Mm. I don't know if you remember, there was <laughs> a Gamerverse imprint on Marvel. Yes, yeah. yeah. And I remember they had a comic book come out for the original Spider-Man game. Mm -hmm. And then I don't think I've seen a Gamerverse comic book from Marvel since. I want to say they did. So they did like City at War. Uh -huh. Was that what it was? And I want to say they did like... A black cat, like oh, one shot there was maybe, because there was like an expansion with black cat. Yeah, and so like to promote that, that would make sense. I didn't see that I one. I think so. They they did like like the the Spider Man thing, mm -hmm. and then like one other thing, mm -hmm. and then have not done anything with it since. <laughs> well, I mean, nothing much has happened with the game. That's true. They're just working off the heat of the release. But there's also been a lot of other Marvel games, and I would have expected there to be like Midnight Suns comics. Mm -hmm. Guardians of the Galaxy Guardians comic. of the Galaxy comics, all, all all sorts of different things. There was an Avengers game. I bet if they bring that back, it'll be during, like, when they do the uh, the Wolverine game. 
that's supposedly coming out. Oh, like a solo Wolverine game? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Whoa. Yeah, it's a dating sim. Don't get excited. <laughs> or get very excited. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bub. Oh. I hope it's not first person. No. That'd be so stupid. You just see hands with claws <laughs> in front of you. It's like the old like Wolfenstein. That might be a fun VR game, though, to do your slashing with your hands. Mm-hmm. But it's like uh, an overcooked like cooking simulator where you're like just cutting up vegetables <laughs> like Fruit Ninja, <laughs> just like cutting up things with your claws. Have we talked about VR games on the podcast at all before? No. I... Luckily, we haven't ran out of material. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> I just don't think I could do it. I've never played a VR game. And the I had one of those like little Google headset things that would turn your smartphone into a mm-hmm. into a 3D thing. Mm-hmm. And that made me so sick. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I got a headset once, like where you just put your phone in. I didn't pl- I didn't play any games, I'm gonna be honest. First thing I did, porn. <laughs> I just wanted to see what uh-huh. it was like. I knew that it was out there. Wanted to give it a look. Oh, like VR specific porn. Yeah, it's not not great. <laughs> But not like just disregard the storyline, <laughs> just full of plot holes. But uh, just the, the the technology was not there <laughs> to give you a full experience. Now, yeah. Now all I have are questions about VR porn. Uh, I'm like, I mean, no one has a good time. <laughs> <laughs> that answers your question. They yeah. should release a special edition headset called the Coculus. <laughs> Oh my god. And it's specifically yeah. porn only. It's like a Kleenex box on the top of it. Yeah, oh yeah, that's a great idea. Like a lube <laughs> squirt. Like a it's one of those beer hats, yes. but it's full of lube and uh, tissues. Oof. God. It's the saddest hat. <laughs> Imagine pre ordering that. <laughs> uh, four please. Yeah. <laughs> this is gonna go on my credit card. Yuck. <laughs> uh I have some news. Yeah. I don't know if you guys covered it, but Jim Lee got a promotion recently. Yeah. He's now the president of DC. Yeah, that he changed his name to DC, right? Yep. He, Jim DC. <laughs> well, because he's also like an editor and chief creative officer yeah. too, right? He's also doing artwork. Like yeah. he is a man with many hats. Yeah. So um he's still kind of doing the same stuff. He just has uh more emails coming to his inbox now. And he's it, what's crazy is like Yes, he's president of DC, but he actually still reports to like a higher up. Like, there's like a CFO and like a board that. Oh yeah. You think like president? Like, oh my god, doesn't get any higher than that. Like, that's the peak level, and it's just like, no, you still got way richer people too. Yeah, talk and the, to. there's the entire infrastructure of Warner Brothers that oh, owns that, DC. That's like a right? separate like, mountain. Yeah. So he he has a long uh, yeah. hill to climb. I'm sure there's like some CEO in Warner Brothers just like, Jim who? Yeah. Like, okay, <laughs> see, whatever. See one of those comic book people? Yeah. <laughs> one of those picture book guys? <laughs> Yuck. It's, it's wild to me that his signatures still get out there. What do you mean? Like that he has time to sign a comic oh, book. Oh, like he can go to like cons and stuff? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't I don't know how one would go about getting a Jim Lee signature with all of the stuff that he does. I found one in an old uh like vintage stock booth, like uh, an old comic that had been signed by Jim Lee. Sure. So that's how I will have one. <laughs> right. I have to find it out in the wild. I bought a copy of his hardback book from Midtown and he did like an in-person oh, Midtown yeah. signing. Well, yeah, like something like that. It's easier to get when people get that famous, it's easier to get like the hardback trades and things like that signed because oh, yeah. they sit down with the publisher and do all that stuff. Not like real in person events anymore. Well, that's kind of what CG. The people who do those CGC signings probably make fucking tons of money. Oh, that Alex Ross makes Alex so, Ross makes a ton of money off of those. It's so expensive. It's ungodly expensive. We were talking about what not earlier in the week mm-hmm. about how James Tunyon did a signing in. Um, who won? The, did Andy win the? Yeah, it did. Yeah, you won like some signed books. Yeah, like that's a perfect way for creators to like, you know, get exposure and to get signed stuff out, and for us, the consumer, to get stuff like that out on that uh, app or whatever. Mm-hmm. So maybe Jim Lee will do a special, dude. That would in be person like, whatnot. That would be super awesome. I would definitely buy one of those like buy it now books mm-hmm, for sure for a Jim Lee sig. I don't have any. I don't have any Jim Lee signatures. He'll I'm I'm he'll be the dude that does cons forever, like Stanley. Sure. Like he's just so entrenched in the comic book community. He's just like, well, I'm a lifer, so I can't really yeah, can't really go anywhere. 
Yeah. We got to talk about the uh, bad idea um, Kickstarter, the Matt Kemp book. Yeah. What's it? What's it called? Monolith. Monolith. Yeah. It looks cool. The art looks amazing. Yeah. The story behind it is is that it's been like five years in the making, and they were like, "What if we didn't care about money or time constraint, and just made the story we wanted to make, and then released it when it was ready to go?" Um, I don't I don't know if they worked on it as a team first and then brought it to Bad Idea to be like, "Do you want to release this or wh- how how the order of operations worked?" Mm-hmm. But in any case, they made a big to do about it. And did this Kickstarter. I checked it at like midday today, which is when it launched. And it was at like $115,000 or something. Is this their first foray into trades? Bad idea. I don't I don't know that I've ever seen them do like a hardback or anything. I've never seen them do like a collected edition of their books. I've never seen a... Like a trade. Yeah, I've never seen a bad idea book in a store. So much okay, less a fair trade. point. <laughs> so yeah, that is yeah. They're kind of like snowflakes. They're like you got to catch them when they're falling to, yeah. <laughs> to get. That's the shit look. that makes me roll my eyes about it. Oh, I know. We talked about this on the Discord today about yeah. how like the fact that they don't have digital comics available infuriates me. I I, I kind of don't mind the digital thing because one, I want to buy physical copies of comics anyway, um, and two, so many digital comics get pirated so quickly. I also understand creators being like, I don't want to do digital. But y- yes, but the fact that I go to a comic shop once a week yeah. and have been for the last 15 years mm. and have never seen yeah. a bad idea book on the shelf is buck wild to me. Well, they only have like, what, like 100 approved retailers mm-hmm. in the country. Yeah. You have to order from a bigger shop. Yeah. That's stupid. Yeah, I mean, I don't mind it that much. Their their whole shtick is seems to be to me as a consumer. We don't want people to read our books. I think that they just embrace the gimmick. Yeah, like I think I, I maybe I have to like just like kind of surrender to the idea of like bad idea isn't for new readers. They're not trying to get exposure or like bring people into the community. They're a bit. They're yeah. They're like a stand up routine in the comic book community and it's only funny to the comic book community but but they go one step further and like it's like if you could only buy zest soap through the mail yeah sure it, it like, but like it, the bit ceases to be a bit when it becomes like m- making a shitload of money they're they're making enough to stay afloat i get like something yeah. in their in their uh Routine is working. It, well, it's, it's they're keeping the lights on. It's the forced scarcity, and that ultimately mm-hmm. is what irritates me. I also think it's the smaller release schedule of the books that they do every year. They're yeah. not putting out thirty books a year. They're maybe doing six or seven. Yeah. Well, I also think they're not as scarce as we think they are because people went crazy for Eniac, mm-hmm. and that was like a huge one. Yeah, but ever since. I think their titles have just like sat on large retailers. Like I got Orc Island and like a buck an issue sale that Midtown was doing. Mm. I got all the issues of the lot in like a 50% off sale, which was a pretty early. But that's one of those bigger retailers that you were talking about earlier. Like shops around us, they probably get cleaned up pretty quick as far as. Bad idea issues. Go. Sure, but we're we're comic book for fans. We buy comics online. No, I know, but like, I, I guess scarcity of the bad idea books all relative of location. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll say this. To me, TKO is the good guy version of bad idea. <laughs> so it's like face off. Yeah, it is. They're essentially the same thing. Yeah, but TKO is like, hey, we sell our books as. Mm-hmm. single trades or single issues or or box set issues yeah. you buy the whole run at once they never go out of print they never go out of print like i'm kind of worried about tko they I, make such good stuff i haven't seen anything in a while they, they they put out some novels yeah they just released a new wave of stuff 
Yeah. They um, do. but I think they're only selling on Amazon now. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Like last time I went to their shop, the everything was just a link to the Amazon page. Hmm. Yeah, and some of the newer books are two ninety nine digital right now. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Which again maybe is a bad sign. I don't know. I uh, yeah. I I love TKO. I I have TKO only, had some slappers. I have only read good stuff from TKO. Yeah. Just absolute incredible books yeah sarah sentient uh black mass rising mm-hmm. red fork i mean the list goes on and on and on yeah well it, it goes to about eight <laughs> <laughs> then it like stops well there's only eight books though they've got a lot i think you'd be surprised yeah they do prose they do those mini books uh-huh um, oh those mini books are sweet yeah those are they're you have, really you have cool. a couple of those mm-hmm. um yeah i don't know it'll be interesting to see if tk tko survives if they don't and bad idea does bad ideas maybe they're onto something here um but in any case the book's title is megalith megalith it Im- the story involves a monolith but okay uh, megalith is the title uh as of recording again it launched today that we're recording it's 8:40 at night and it's at one hundred ninety-eight thousand dollars, sixty-seven degrees outside, winds from the southeast. <laughs> Do you know where your children are? <laughs> um, the rewards are like so difficult to understand. Classic. <laughs> like, for for twenty five dollars, bad idea will spit in your eye. <laughs> if you mail in your childhood blanket, you get to eat the cover. <laughs> we will call you a dork via voicemail. <laughs> I don't know. It let, I'll just rip off a couple of them um, mm-hmm. so we can get a vibe for it. Tier one is they'll is twenty dollars <laughs> and they'll put your name on like on the moon on their booth <laughs> at San Diego Comic Con. You don't oh, even get the comic book? This is going to enrage me. No. I <laughs> Okay, so tier two is We crush an ant in your name. <laughs> This is for Greg Squeeze. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> the second tier, the cheapest way to get this book is $40. Okay, and... It's probably a thicken. No. It's oh, a, God. It's eight pages. Oh, my God. So you, you pledge $40, you get your name on a San Diego Comic-Con booth, and you get an eight-page like preview comic. It's like a zero issue. And then every other tier adds... Uh, another book and like another forty dollars oh my god so tier so what we said tier two is 40 bucks you get the eight page comic tier three is 80 dollars and then you get um the other eight pages another eight page comic and then tier four is 120 dollars and then you get the two eight pagers and a more full comic for 400 dollars, you get all the comics which probably makes the entire book yeah the hardcover is $125 is the cheapest you can get it. Fucking jump off a bridge. So, that's what I'm saying. And that's the thing that they're like... One thing that I appreciate about this, at least, is like... They're like, help... The title of the Kickstarter is only you can help bring Megalith to comic stores. So they're being upfront that like, we're funding this. We'll use the money from this to get it printed in hardback and do all the niceties that we want to do and then get it into comic book stores. Like, I think I would be pissed if I paid $125 for a hardback book Mm -hmm. and then it was like 40, 50 bucks in comic book stores by the time it gets like normal graphic novel price or normal um, floppy price if they end up doing floppies. Yeah, but Mike, those casuals don't have their name on a a San Diego (laughs) Comic-Con booth. (laughs) I mean, you have to really weigh the options here. Right. One person paid $3,500 to get everything from all the previous tiers, whatever, and everything Bad Idea offers and produces for the next six months. Which isn't that much That's stuff. Like Aaron Myers <laughs> on yeah. Twitter. Yeah. Go ahead, Mike. Sorry. All four books that they make for yeah, the next six that's months. That's what I'm saying. Over the next six months, they'll probably release like four or five books they don't they're not like a very prolific publisher yeah for thirty five hundred dollars that's a lot of money that's a camry 
that's, that's a, yeah, that's a bad you, idea. You think about it, you you can buy a pretty decent used car for that amount of money. Not um, a chance. I can't afford this stuff. No, no, I, no one can. <laughs> And I'm a Matt Kent mega fan. Yeah. So if there was ever a book that I was like, I'm all in on this Kickstarter campaign, mm-hmm. it would be. I mean, I did the Cosmic Detective one, like, didn't even think about it. Oh, yeah. But it fucking kicked ass. And, and it, it was great. It was only like 60 bucks. Yeah. And I'm sure Megalith is going to be awesome. I just can't validate. Eight pages? Spending $40 for eight pages, $80 for 16 pages. 125 for a, a what graphic if, novel. Okay, so what if we all three went in, spent, like, we did the $40 tier, we got the eight-page comic, we ripped it into eight pieces and mailed it to eight of our Patreon members. <laughs> no, 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 no. We take out the staples and we CGC each, each page. Each individual page. You can you yeah. can slab a page. Uh-huh. And then we sell those. Mm-hmm. On eBay. And we call ourselves Bad Idea 2. Batter ideas. Okay, so <laughs> here's the thing: they're they're also kind of pitching it as an exclusive deal for oh, the really? Kickstarter. Mm-hmm. That being said, they're printing as many as are ordered, which that's how you do. Like things? I just mentioned, they have two hundred thousand dollars in the bank right now off of this. Um, a lot of issue zeros are going to be printed, baby. Mm-hmm. <laughs> those those eight page comics are going to be all over the place. Not hard to get. No, I don't think so. Because everybody who backs this Kickstarter is going to put that shit on eBay for eighty bucks because yep. they spent forty dollars on it. But this e- is the M M&M and M variant all over again. <laughs> but here's the thing. Uh, yeah, it is the M M&M and M variant. Um, the eBay is going to be inundated with these comics, though. You know what I mean? Oh, the there's buy just, it now? There's going to be too many listings. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to do buy it now. Otherwise, there's just going to be too many competing listings yep. that you're, they're not going to sell for what you bought them for, I don't think. I'm, maybe I sound like an idiot later when this book comes out, and maybe it's like a great collector's item, but I don't see it. I don't see it becoming a collector's item. I'll wait till this comes to comic shops, and I'll buy it then. Yeah, It will. I'm trying to figure out what the grift is, and I really think it's just a practice in capitalism and getting it fully funded by people to put in comic book shops. And you can just say you'll have the Kickstarter exclusive or whatever. That's Well, that's, yeah, that's exactly what it is. And honestly, if you're a company that like can do that and you can make $200,000 in one day mm-hmm. before the day is over, mm-hmm. but then... But- this is this is the problem. This is this was exactly the reason everybody shit on Berserker. For this exact reason. I know. <laughs> so I think I'd be more upset if Keanu Reeves was attached to this. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's I think it was just Keanu Reeves for me. He knew he knew better. <laughs> nope. Fuck this. Fuck that. Fuck you. I'm out. <laughs> it 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 uh... I'm flabbergasted. Yeah, it's a lot of money. One might say too much. I don't. Um, I say more power to you if you can afford it, and that's great for you. I, I, but there will be a cheap version of it, and I will buy that thing. I'm not like, I'm not as mad or upset about the situation as it seems like you guys are. Like, it's like they're just it. they're just spitting in the face of everything. They yeah. have this like awesome opportunity to do something cool, and they're just treating it like a goof. Yeah. And now I feel like fucking, you know, Millhouse. On The Simpsons, just like, why aren't you doing like the right thing? And like, they're like, fucking, like, bad the pri- idea, bad ideas, fucking, like, Nelson, just like, ha ha, like, yeah, the thing you love, I'm making fun of. And you, it's just like, please, you're part of this. You feel like the price is so high that it's almost like an you're, Andy Kaufman troll job. Yes, that it, it's, it's like, per- fucking, yes, it's like performance art to see what people will that's pay what for. the it's, company feels yeah. like yeah. when you make an invisible comic book, yeah, it could get it graded like. <laughs> You're ob- obviously your tactic is just like yeah. goofball bullshit. Mm-hmm. If you have to sell comic books inside a donut box, like you, uh, amen. You f- you figured it out. You found your niche. You found your gimmick. You found your audience. Yep. It annoys the fuck out of me, and mm-hmm. that probably fills you with so much joy. 
bad idea, uh, marketing rep. And you know what? Eat away. E- eat all you can from me right now because I'm just steaming with anger. You know, I'll, I'll say this. If Bad Idea did all their nonsense stuff, and also I could go buy an Orc Island trade for $20 uh, at my local shop, yeah. I'd have zero problems with them. Same. I would just wipe my hands yeah. of it. Yeah. Because they would still be making a bazillion dollars from all those goofballs that want all that nonsense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want the box of donuts or whatever it is. Okay, fine. Yeah. But I want to go read. I want to go to fucking Barnes and Noble and yeah, go buy it. Exactly. Anyway, there's your 20 minute bad idea commercial. <laughs> Fuck. They got us. Yeah. God damn it. They got us. The comic looks cool. Glad I'm back. Yeah. Um, of course. With that, Matt Kent is awesome. I love him. In Matt. sadder news, comic publisher IDW hits reset by laying off 39% of its staff oh, and I appointing didn't hear a new that. CEO. Yeah. Uh, IDW is known for its licensed comics. Um, more recently, a Stranger Things team and T crossover had been announced. Uh, every crossover you can think of with every TV show movie mashup you can think of, it has happened on IDW. <laughs> whether it be Transformers, TMNT, uh, My Little Pony, they Ghostbusters, they did for a second. I don't know where GI Joe's at right now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, big cuts at IDW. Um, the CEO is actually the uh, son of IDW's chairman of the board, Howard Jonas. So David Jonas is the new CEO, who is the son of great board chairman. <laughs> it, you know, uh, that so be- Nepo Baby <laughs> is now in charge. <laughs> That's bad to be like the company was doing so bad. I'm going to put my son in charge. Yeah, my, like, my dipshit shit son. That's not a good cultural thing for the company to have. Like, even let's say. He's done the work, and mm-hmm. he could do that job as well as everybody else. Yeah. The people at the company that work there and are friends with the people who just got laid off mm-hmm. are not going to feel that way. <laughs> and it's probably not the case. He's probably not qualified. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's just so silly. It's, yeah. something, it's, it's, it's really a movie plot at this point. Just yeah, like, right. Like, company slashes their staff in half and the new CEO to bring everything back to, uh, you know, flush is the chairman of the board's son who dropped out of college and has a bong best friend named Smokey. <laughs> Couldn't decide what he wanted to do for 30 years yeah. and now works for dad. Wears, you know, jorts to meetings. <laughs> the, the thing that makes me so broken hearted about this is lest we forget IDW put out 30 days of night. Mm-hmm. Like, they have a history of putting out really good stuff. Oh, they did oh, October yeah. Faction, yeah. which became mm-hmm. a great TV show. I'm so bummed that didn't get a second season. Yeah. It just uh, like, disappeared on Netflix. I think Usagi is on IDW. Right. Are they on Dark, Dark no, they, Horse? Were they on Dark Horse? Yeah, They're yeah. back on Dark Horse. Okay. They, it was IDW for a stint. But, I mean, they have a history of putting out some good stuff. <laughs> I have a soft, real soft spot for 30 Days of Night. That was the first non-superhero comic yeah. i read no i mean you're right a, a broken clock is right twice a day <laughs> and um, i'm sure they were trying to figure out how they could get tmnt into 30 days of uh, night dude the Didn't x-files happen. the x-files 30 days of night crossover was actually really oh shocker good. they did a crossover okay i was wondering where that was going to come well, up written by the drummer of tool okay so oh what's his name adam jones okay i i, I don't know i i uh, who's the lead singer uh, Maynard. Maynard. That's who I remember. I get that the crossovers are their bread and butter, but I almost wonder. Obviously not if they have to cut thirty nine percent of their staff. Yeah, I almost wonder if like it's become a disservice because they're such quick, easy money, but mm-hmm. but it's not ongoing revenue because mm-hmm. no one wants to write TMNT versus Power Rangers. Like, well, hold on now, because that's on term. Boom Studios, and, and James it's fucking it. awesome. <laughs> but it's a mini series, right? Yeah. You're right. That's I the think thing. they have to do all, the right crossover. All these crossovers are mini series, and you get people jazzed on the weirdness of people interacting. But they need more stuff like the ongoing TMNT book. Okay, so you know the bit we do on the Patreon sometimes, we're just like, let's tr- dream up a fun like collabo or smash up or whatever. Yeah. Like that's what I think an IDW meeting is, and then they're just like, "Hey, what if we actually made it though? <laughs> How much are those licenses?" <laughs> and like like we're just goofing and it's it's a fun goof, but once like it gets to like production and like 
you try to find a writer and an artist who are equally passionate about the project. You've spent a ton of money on a very niche thing that some people walk by on the shelves and go, huh, that's funny, and then just keep walking. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. And you're going to sell the first issue and not the subsequent ones. Because you might buy Inspector Gadget Rides My Little Pony. Ooh. Um, Stop drilling. <laughs> <laughs> for the first cover because it's funny yeah. but you're not going to buy the second third and fourth issue and then after that it's over and like we talked about i think it only works really well if you get a creator attached to it that is just so out of left field yeah. like if grant morrison did the my little pony inspector gadget thing dude stop he, seriously people will be <laughs> yeah. like okay i'm gonna see this through no i would read i would buy every cover i would read every issue <laughs> I would definitely do if Grant Morrison was writing something that's stupid. Like if you get sure. like Raphael Grandpa like to do like a Simpsons like Battletoads <laughs> crossover, like people would lose their fu- like Daniel Warren Johnson on like Transformers and like Bluey. Like you you knock those together and Daniel Warren Johnson's just like, Yeah, I got something fucked up I can make with this. Dude. Like Bluey taking down Unicron just like yeah, yeah. with kindness. Yeah. WWE versus Transformers. Holy shit. Okay. Or like GoBots or something. Yeah. Like, what can the WWE go after? And Power Rangers. I think it's just Greek gods. Oh, yeah. Nice. You don't have to license that. You don't. It's, it's, it's <laughs> public domain. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Any other news that I have? Bing, ba, boom. Read my face. Uh, no, we got it. Nice. We got it all. Hey. It's comic book time then. Yeah. Well, before we get into it, I do want to mention, if you like what you're hearing, we have a Patreon, patreon.com backslash first issue club. We have two tiers. This guy. Three bucks, one buck. Uh, it gets you access to all of the videos, episodes, articles that we are doing on there. Uh, we're having a ton of fun over on Patreon, so go check that out, patreon.com backslash first issue club. What's the difference between the tiers? Thank you. So we had... I like, generally tier. don't understand. That's... We had we had one tier for the longest time. Uh-huh. That was our premium membership. It was the price of a comic book, which is four dollars. Okay. Now I wanted to add a just a taste tier for a buck. Uh-huh. Now we put out on the Patreon about four to five episodes a month, uh-huh. and with the just a taste, you get the beginning and the end of the month episodes, audio only. We do video with the okay. premium Patreon membership. Got it. So this is just a way to kind of dip your toe. Take a little nibble of what we have to offer over there. We've already had two of the dollar subscriptions uh, upgrade to full tier. How about it? So it is a different vibe on the Patreon. It's a way different vibe. We (laughs) unbutton the top button of our jeans. Oh, yeah, yeah. I sing less and curse more. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I I think it is more personal on the Patreon. We share, like, things that we've bought. You know, we yeah. go through lists sometimes. We play games. It's a fucking hoot over there. Yeah, it's a good time. You guys talked about aliens a lot mm-hmm. <laughs> on the last one. Scared the shit out of me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, speaking of that, I have reestablished the FIC hotline. Oh, yeah. That's Hell so yeah. if you want to call in with a fun story, question, or comment, you can call toll free 816 579 1734. And leave a message or a text, and you may hear it on an episode or a Patreon episode. Hell yes. Yeah, we were sourcing alien stories from listeners for the Patreon. Mm-hmm. So if you've got an alien story, hit hit back 30 seconds in your podcast app, call that number, and let us know. Yeah. We'd I'll, love to hear from you. I'll cut all those stories that we get on that hotline together, and we'll just release an alien uh, listener episode. Hell yeah. I, oh, and so, then I want to react to each. Uh, oh, definitely. That's what the fun, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Because I, I put on the Patreon thing, I was just like, hey, listen, if you have a Tales from the Shop, you want to tell us? Yeah. From your, like, totally. We want to hear all the wackiness from your world and comic books and showcase it here on the show. Dope. And then now we can get into comic books. Okay. Good. I read Money Shot Comes Again. Hell yes. Money Shot was a Tim Seeley comic about porn stars um, (laughs) who got into the industry because they wanted to explore outer space and science but couldn't get funding. Mm -hmm. So they thought, hey, if we fuck some aliens, 
more people will watch and we're going to fund science and exploration. It's like if OnlyFans models like put their money towards like saving museums or libraries. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If, right. if OnlyFans models were PhDs that got into OnlyFans, <laughs> some of them might be to fund that stuff. <laughs> I follow a couple lawyers on there and there you go, you know. <laughs> follow some lawyers on OnlyFans. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh you always here, when people talk about OnlyFans, you're, they're like, people make like a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars a month on that thing, uh-huh. and I'm some like, not most. That can't be true. Sure, it can. Yeah, that is so much money just to look at like some well naughty pictures online. Right? Oh, buddy well, boy, it's, hey, it's it goes, more than that. It goes oh, yeah. way more than that. There's yeah. like there's like whole produ- like production companies on OnlyFans that like have all their shit. Oh, okay. The sex, the sex world is very uh, uh, entertaining to me, mm-hmm. and I, I love following it. I did see a story the other day. Now we're on a whole other thing. I saw a story the other day about a woman who broke up with her boyfriend because she was like, "My only fans uh, are like I treat them like my boyfriends, and I send them all like messages in the morning. Oh and God, I don't want like." there to be like competition or my relationships with them to feel ingenuine so she's like i have like you know 900 boyfriends <laughs> and i don't her. have to touch any of them <laughs> Good for yeah, her. yeah right and they pay her monthly yeah. yeah and it's crazy to think that like the service this person pro- is providing is the facade of a relationship yeah. like that's Girlf- girlfriend material yeah yeah, yeah. That that is bizarre to me. That's some, what you pay for. Some people want that. Some people yeah. can't. You get that person's mm-hmm. like phone number, and it's like text only. Yeah, yeah. And you can like chat with this person. And feed pics. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, not only that, like sometimes they do form those relationships, and like they give them encouragement, and like they yeah. listen to their day. Like it's a whole uh, world of um, <laughs> satisfaction out there if you just uh, know where to look. Yeah, man. Like, imagine if your therapist also showed you her boobs. <sighs> Awful. So unhealthy. <laughs> Is so it? I'd so... have to see a therapist from the, from those <laughs> therapy sessions. Yeah, exactly right. So much of what we're talking about is unhealthy. I guess sex it therapy could be. Sex therapy does exist. I think there's there's parts of it that are just like, go ahead. Like, you want to be sexy on the internet and make tons of money yeah do it that's great yes i think the like relationship building aspect of it Mm -hmm. is gross and unhealthy it's tricky yeah it's it's a service those people offer i don't think you should have real relationships with these people that's scary to me i think deep well you know i can't even say that i uh, look at it look at it this way People pay us to have a pseudo relationship. We've never met any of our Patreons, right? I send them pictures of my feet. Yeah. But people don't have romantic feelings for us. We don't know that for sure. I would heartily disagree. (laughs) I love each and every one of you. Mm -hmm. I think these people take advantage of somebody needing to have a relationship i disagree because when i go to mcdonald's yeah there's a hamburger on the menu Uh i don't have to buy the hamburger it's there i really want it but i don't need to buy it mcdonald's doesn't need to take the hamburger option away because wendy's has it burger king has it but greg if they tell you the hamburger is going to fulfill you no, they don't do that. No, the, but I'm saying I, I feel and they like, do with commercials. <laughs> and uh, but I, well, I guess they kind of do. Uh, but I, I think that's the difference. Is that like you're coming here for nude pictures, um, and I'm saying now that I'm going to fulfill your need for a partner in your life. Okay, so. This it, is this is more specifically this like individual that I read this article about. Not, okay, not gotcha. Only fans as a whole. The stuff that I've seen in articles and like documentaries and stuff is like they have like an a la carte menu. These sex workers, and uh-huh. it's just like I offer these services, whether it be feed pics, you know, lewd 
like or girlfriend material. Uh-huh. Like you know, going in, I'm doing a service for you. Yeah, I'm not in love with you. Yeah, I am not your girlfriend. But for an extra fifteen bucks a month, I will text you x amount of times, and you will think that I am your girlfriend. Oof. But just know when it's that I don't credit like card that part of it. Once that credit card declines, I'm gone. Yeah. It's hey, tell me something. How was that comic book? <laughs> <laughs> this one was good. I don't know that Tim Seeley's still writing it. The book has like a different vibe. So S- Seeley is still writing. Is it. he okay? Sarah Beatty was the co-writer. Uh huh. And she was a, a kind of a public figure and a comedian. Uh huh. She wrote the first series with Tim. Okay. She's not co-writing. Okay. Money shot comes again. Got it. Yeah. So maybe it's missing the taste of that beady. Yeah, yeah, the the book has a different vibe to it, but it's still um fun, silly, raunchy. Um what cover did you get? I it's over there. It's the uh um homage to Crisis on Infinite Earth. Nice. Nice. That's <laughs> that's the one to get. It's pretty funny. Yeah. Um like I said, it is over the top. It's very like pornographic. That's like the whole idea of the comic. So if that offends you, you're not going to be interested in it. I also don't think this is necessarily the best jumping on point. I would read the other issues first before getting into this series or volume. Yeah. Um, well, I'm sure it kind of sets up what the whole fucking deal is. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> that that that's the most interesting part of this is mm-hmm. like the the realization that I could start an OnlyFans type thing to fund what I actually want to do, um, and do it in a way that's like idiocracy. It's like in the future, and we've like the world's gone to shit, and it's full of full of dummies, horny dummies, horny dummies, which is kind of where we're at now in America, to be <laughs> honest. <laughs> But it's another good, if you've read the other books, it's another good entry. They're out of money again, and they're on the road trying to save the earth while simultaneously making making content. Nice. Nice. Tent, that'll put a tent in your pants. <laughs> Ew. Girlfriend material or not. Yeah. <laughs> um, Andy, I think we have an overlapping book. Huh? Peacemaker tries hard. Yeah. By our buddy Kyle Starks. Friend of the show, Kyle. Um, I messaged him today. I told him, I was like, hey, we're going to be covering the book. I was like, is there anything you want the audience to know, like what to expect? And he's just like, he said, just expect a lot of fun from this book. And the first issue, I, was, I, thought, I told him, I was like, the first issue definitely delivered on a fucking fun ass oh, yeah. opening to Peacemaker. Yeah. And if it if it keeps this momentum, which I'm sure it will... It's gonna be a, a blast to read every every time it comes out. I was telling Mike D that first like I don't know what it was one or two pages where those background characters are talking about like oh why would you change a beloved franchise character very you meta know, whatever yeah. and it was like oh my god this is so hysterical like yeah. from the get go I was rolling and it just never lets up. He he adopts a little dog that mm-hmm. looks like he's got a little bow tie on, and he names him Bruce Wayne. He names him he, Bruce Wayne. He's a very fancy boy, and <laughs> and what's crazy is like, it, yes, the book is very funny, but like it immediately added some humanity to who Peacemaker is. Oh yeah, and like really kind of gives you a peek of his upbringing, and you're just like, oh, this guy's kind of broken. Yeah, and is really searching out love and acceptance, and just like. Uh, friendship of any kind. Yeah, like a true, a true connection, connection. with somebody. Yeah, yeah, and like so, it's it's great that he has uh, Bruce Wayne, the dog, which immediately gets John Wicked, <laughs> of course. And um, uh, it's uh, it was kind of it was lighthearted and a little melancholy because you're just like he wants friends. He's like trying to have this party, and everyone's just like, I don't want to fucking hang out. <laughs> yeah, with Peacemaker, he's kind of a lot. Um. <laughs> And I think the characters that, um, you know, Kyle gets to play with in these are going to be a lot of fun. And you, I mean, Peacemaker isn't dumb. Like, he's not, he's not a dumb character. Yeah. But he's definitely, like, kind of naive. Naive is exactly the way I would describe it. And th- those kinds of characters that are, like, 
you know, gen, gen, generally intelligent, but like kind of oblivious to the world around them. Yeah. Make for fun characters and their growth is usually very rewarding. Yeah. Everybody loves a on. himbo. Everybody loves a himbo, baby. <laughs> That's why Duffman's so popular. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, uh, I loved it. Um, w- What cover did you get? I have pre-ordered all the movie poster Hell covers. Yeah. Those are the ones. Which sure. are just like, I don't know if they're parody, parodying like specific movies, but they're just like every cover looks like a, a movie poster you'd see in a like AMC or a, wherever you would go to see movies. Yeah. I can't afford the Dan Hip ones, so I'm getting the movie God, poster ones too. You know. <laughs> God bless Dan Hip. He's he's making money hand over fist with yeah. this Marvel Snap stuff now and uh, all these ratio variant covers he's doing. Yeah. But I, I, I had a blast with uh, Peacemaker. Dress Abs- Hard. Absolutely loved it. It is a black label book. So naughty words abound. Definitely not for kids, but absolute blast. There's and- a there's a great scene where Peacemaker's beating up like a gang of guys and he's got that dude held up against the wall with his middle, with finger, his middle finger up finger. his nose. Oh, my God. <laughs> so great. So rad. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Great book. Um, I also read real quick. Um Read my face, damn it. Sorry. Yeah, you got a mic in front of it. <laughs> yeah, new new phone probs. I read Survival on Dark Horse by Sean Lewis, who did Coyotes, The Few, and Thumbs, and the arts by uh, Brendan Everett. Uh, it is about this young woman who is, like, going back to her hometown in Alaska to see her, like, dad, who's kind of hosting this survivalist like uh conservative like powwow where all these like ex not expats but like all these like survivalists and like people that like live off the grid and don't trust the government are like kind of convening and there is like um in the background there's like this storyline of this russian uh disaster that's happened that has like they russian has like caused a media blackout so no one knows what happened in russia to like make this strange phenomenon happen uh later to find out that there's like a downed plane in this alaskan wilderness where this uh uh off the grid group is meeting and it's like a combination of like these russian hybrid vampires that have been created that are like now set loose into the wilderness dude and um it is i i i (laughs) so i did a lot of weird stuff today i reached out to sean lewis to talk about the book on twitter and i was like I can't find out if it's limited or ongoing. He's like, he goes, it's it's limited right now, but like if there's a lot of, you know, fervor for it, yeah. I would love to make it ongoing. There's like a whole other story here going on. And like, it's so crazy about like how, you know, I'm, I'm, America and Russia have never been like chums, but like all the stuff happening right now with like Except during World Ukraine, War II. <laughs> the one time... <laughs> Like the stuff happening right now with like Russia and Ukraine, it like kind of sets the story into like a different realm of uh, concept of like what it's trying to say, and uh, then like juxtaposition with like vampires just like attacking like these uh. Uh, survivalists. It's it was an absolute blast to read. It was like super bloody, and I am uh, I'm kind of anxious to see where it goes. I want to see what these off the grid uh, dipweeds are going to do with these. Uh, Super Dude, Russian vampires. That sounds so sick. I don't know how I missed that book. <laughs> What's it called again? Survival. Survival, okay. Yeah, definitely going to pick that one up. Yeah. That's so, right up my So alley. go check it out. Tell Dark Horse to keep making it because um, it sounds like a, a fun like survival, uh, like uh, 30, 30 Days of Night, yeah. Walking Dead style book. Dope. Where like, you know... It starts in this one area, and I can just see the uh, infestation of vampires just moving across, you know, the whole country. Yeah. So lots of different stories can be told. Sold. All right. <laughs> what else you read? Um. Oh, I read the new Cullen Bunn book on Oni Press. It's called like, uh, Lamentation. Yeah, Lamentation. Lamentation. It's okay. So here's the thing. I it love comes co- to take. Uh, nope, it, it's it's a soft take. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I, but I just want to prep you guys. I love Cullen Bunn. Yeah. He's the king of horror. He knows what he's doing. This is a realm of horror I'm not fully 
appreciative of because it's just not my tea. It's like gothic horror, very Phantom of the Opera, very like based around theatrical takes on horror. T- terror as opposed to horror. Yeah, exactly. It's very, there's some there Lovecraftian go. stuff going on. There's um, like multiple realities happening. The book is well written. It's well illustrated. It's not my cup of horror. I yeah. tend to like this sort of stuff. Um, it's three issues. So the book is set in three acts. Yeah. Much like a play. Yeah. And it just takes you on this journey of this young woman auditioning for a play. She thinks it's just a normal, you know, play about whatever. Turns out there's more to uh, the play and the building and the uh, director than meets the eye. Just goes on from there. So and uh, they're big old beefy issues. Too. They're huge. Seven bucks, but they're like forty eight pages. They're wow. they're real thick. Yeah. Um, you know, if this was a bad idea book, it'd be five hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you can only buy it with rocks. <laughs> And it would come with a mask of some <laughs> it would, variety. It would come with a tentacle from yeah. Cthulhu. <laughs> um, but I, I, I mean, I, I enjoyed myself. I, if you're a fan of gothic horror, if you're a fan of obviously Cullen Bunn, who's phenomenal, uh, give it a give it a try. It's it's sitting on my nightstand right now. I haven't gotten to it yet, but it it gave me the vibe mm-hmm. of like an empty man. Yeah, where it, it's very much about the build up. So yeah, it's empty um, man ruled. I loved that book. It's yeah. like it's like a mixture of Victorian empty man right. style. Just get in that headspace, and it it uh, it's very cool. Yeah, there was a handful of DC black label books that were Victorian, and then IDW did another kind of like Victorian era horror called Wellington, uh-huh. that mm. I loved. Yeah, and then I think Daphne Byrne was the other book I was thinking of that was yeah on DC. Yeah, that. That horror in that era, I think, is interesting just because you get rid of a lot of tech stuff. That, yeah. <laughs> and like amenities with normal lighting that makes some of the stories, they're, they're so far detached in time mm-hmm. that it almost feels more real to me. Sure, because it's right. like, oh God, in the 1800s, like... <laughs> I don't know what was going on. Like, Everything was spookier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> spookier. It feels more like a time where you could believe things about the occult because the internet's just not like, around. Like yeah. ghosts everybody. actually existed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ghosts actually went extinct. Uh, yeah, in 1992. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, with the rise of the internet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they got sucked into the, the like, World Wide Web. Those, <laughs> those sort of stories that... Make it seem like all those modems in our house have just sucked all the ghost energy in them. <laughs> that, like, this this is the time period where the like myths came from. Totally, like, I love that sort of stuff. Uh-huh. I so like the the thing that comes to my mind when you're when we're talking about this is the movie The Others with Nicole Kidman. Yeah, like that's a prime example to me of like gothic Victorian horror. Yeah, for sure. And so I'm a big old scaredy cat. I don't like horror movies. Um. I love the others, yeah, because like it, it has that twist and those like very suspenseful moments that me, a scaredy cat, can withstand and still get you know my uh, timbers shivered. Yeah, well, and that's what I mean by like terror versus horror, right? You have mm-hmm. the you have the kind of the slow build up to one big, yeah, horrific, yes, reveal, yes, as opposed to like Jason jumping out of the bushes, mm-hmm. yeah, or a woman taking a cheese grater. To any part of her body. Hell yeah, brother. Evil Dead Rise. So rules. how was Evil Dead Rise, Vargas? So dope. Was it as bloody as I could imagine in my mind? Yup. Okay. It was so good. Fuck that movie into the dirt. No, man. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> how would you rank it amongst the other Evil Dead? Evil has, Dead. Evil Dead has no misses. It's better than the original, but only because the original didn't have any money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The original's like a so bad it's good sort of thing. It's, they just didn't have any money. Yeah. It's so low budget. Uh-huh. The fact that Evil Dead, the original, can still stand up to horror um, like critiques and like just, um, I can't find the other word, but like that speaks a lot about Sam Raimi's storytelling ability. Oh, big time. Yeah. And Bruce Campbell with his magnetism. I mean, yeah, everybody in that movie is, is pitch perfect. Yeah. I mean, there's some legitimately horrific shit in that movie. Yeah. We can talk about Evil Dead Rise more on the Patreon. Yeah, we'll do that. I have I have a lot of good takes. Okay, that's all I read. I'm out. All right, 
I'll go through my stuff quick. I know we're coming up on an hour. Uh, so yeah, I read Peacemaker Tries Hard. Great book. I read Astrobots. On, on whatnot publishing. On whatnot. Well, it says massive on the cover. Is that an, do you know if that's an artist or if that's like an imprint? I think it's like, so you know how Image has like. It's like a British thing. It's massive, bro. <laughs> like Skybound. Yeah, well, but more like how like creators have their own like company yeah. that owns the IP, yep. and they license that IP to oh, like Image. Scott Snyder. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, best jacket. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? that's what it's called. I think it's like that. Yeah. So um, why the fuck did they put it all the way over there? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so distracting. So Astrobots is by uh, Simon Furman and Hector uh, Trunek. I think that's how you say it. But Simon Furman wrote the original Transformers comic run. Oh. And this is like that. (laughs) So (laughs) this first issue, I was telling Mike D. uh, Astro Bots sounds like a knockoff Transformers you would find in the Dollar General. And this makes so much more sense that they would do like the we own the IP of this. Because I bet you anything... This guy probably established some great story points for Transformers uh-huh. and only got paid for those issues yep. and probably feels real bent out of shape about it. So here's the... And probably rightfully so. Here's Astro the thing. Astrobots, robots in a coat. <laughs> here's the thing. Simon did not come up with Astrobots. There was a... And there's an essay in the back. Oh. There was a creator who came up with the Astrobots idea, (laughs) they contacted Simon and said, like, we've got all these ideas for this world. Can you tell the story in that universe? And he He, said, yeah. He's getting taken advantage of again. (laughs) Girlfriend material. Dude, give me a break. That's pretty much exactly what it is. Start your own thing, man. But I'll I'll say this. If if you're a fan of (laughs) mecha, like, Uh stories, Mm -hmm. like Transformers. Yeah. This is, I mean, it's directly in that lane. Mm-hmm. Um, this tells the story of a species of robots. You know, they all have like AI, whatever. Oh, this is <laughs> they. They go to. They're sent off Earth to a planet to prepare it for mm-hmm. human colony ships to show up. Mm-hmm. And now the first colony ship is showing up in sixteen hours. And we find out that there's nothing is ready. They've been slacking <laughs> off. <laughs> None of the tables are up. <laughs> They're real procrastinators. These robots are just like playing video games and sitting on mountains. We have built zero <laughs> houses for these people to live in. Actually, the, the beanbag chairs. The <laughs> city. Massive, massive beanbag chairs. But they're full with nuts and bolts. <laughs> 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 Actually, the city is like perfect, but you find out that there's like there's hints that there was this <laughs> all the water's at oil. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> there was this like uprising, and the robots that are in charge have like basically done evil to make this city happen. Mm-hmm. And there's one guy who shows up from the desert as like a remnant of that uprising, and he's like. People need to know. Like, people need to know what happened on this planet. Uh-huh. Is and, he a robot? Yeah, he's a robot. Everybody's a robot, except for the people on the ship. So Until we find out. Also robots. <laughs> the humans are also robots. <laughs> this town was built on the suffering of robots. <laughs> but did that's kind of what Transformers is. Did you hear that like, the old house on the hills built on an ancient <laughs> robot, robot burial ground? <laughs> So that's Astrobots. If 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 Transformers uh, is your thing, and Transformers is my thing, yeah. So can I ask this question? Yeah, Mike D uh, famously made the greatest what not burn by calling it what not oh, to what read. not to read. Uh, is this like it's decent? The first issue is a shitload of world building. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of words. There's a lot of names. There's a lot of like that stuff. Mm-hmm. If you can get over that, it seems interesting enough. I'll Our say lead that. character, Bloptimus Bime. <laughs> it's not that bad. Okay. But, yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty entertaining. It I, wasn't I pre-ordered offensive. the first issue because, like, the cover looks fucking sick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it looks rad. And there is a Transformers homage cover that I'm trying to track down. So, yeah. Is there an ex- the exposition bot? Is that the one that came out from the desert? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. L- let the people know. Exposition bot. <laughs> let me download my new character <laughs> development trip. 
so here's the whole deal with this place. <laughs> So you're probably wondering why are there two sons? Well, that's a great question. Actually, Exposition Bot is just uh, Jonathan Hickman. <laughs> just a big scroll just in the sky like Star Wars. Uh, yeah. uh, one of the other books I read was Shazam by Mark Wade and Dan Mora. And this is a fun ass book. Yeah. Um, does the, does the D and DC now stand for Dan Mora? It should because Jesus Christ, that guy is on every book now. Hot damn! He, and he does a spread in this that's just like a one-page thing uh-huh. of like stuff Shazam has done, mm-hmm. and it's just the dishes. It's just gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> and the, he did that page is also a variant of the for for the cover. But so Shazam, this book is mostly just Billy Batson kind of talking about what it means to be mm-hmm. Shazam, mm-hmm. helping people, doing all that stuff. He goes and he there's like a building that collapses. He helps the first responders take care of that building. Yep. And then the hook to the rest of the series is... He's a robot. <laughs> he's an astrobot. Isn't that wild? <laughs> Isn't that something? Um, he, he like kind of freaks out at the end. There's all these reporters with like cameras on him. Um. And he like kind of freaks out at this woman and who, who's who's like she's oh, like b- 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 woman. <laughs> no, I can see your ankles. No, she like gives him a hug. She's like, "You saved my babies. Thank you so much. What can I do for you?" And he's like, "You can go for material." <laughs> he's like, "You can get away from me. You should be you know, worshiping my feet. I could destroy all of you. I'm this whatever." Oh God! And then his face changes and he's like, "What just happened? Like, what was this?" So. Hmm. There's this these two sides where Billy Batson is now kind of like a streamer kid doing the Peter Parker thing, uh-huh. reporting on Shazam. Shazam and his like you know do goodery, uh-huh. and then at the end there's this thing where he's like an evil version of Billy Batson. So, yeah, some some reason he like freaked out on this woman and like kind of pulled like a Black Adam mm-hmm. and was you know all about himself and people should be worshiping him and mm-hmm. thanking him and all this stuff. Mm-hmm on tv so that's seems to be the hook at least for the first arc uh so i well in my uh sabbatical from the show uh-huh. um i listened to you guys you mentioned that he's no longer called shazam he's called the captain called the captain yep which is a name that a stepdad gives himself they they do um, explain it in this book <laughs> where it's like kind of a, a joke, a tongue in cheek thing. But Billy Batson says, at least it's something I can say without forcing a change. Okay. The, you know, the lightning to strike. So that is canon now. I guess my question is, why do they still call the book Shazam? They're not going to call it the captain. Because that's his name. <laughs> <laughs> because then you don't have the ties to the other Shazam books. Oh, okay. Come on. Stupid me. And it could just be because Marvel has Captain Marvel and Captain America now. Yeah, Marvel owns Captains. Yeah. Look, get a little Captain in you. Uh, whatever. I also read Groot. Mm-hmm. Seems interesting enough. It's a Dan Amnett book yeah. about the origin of Groot. Um, and he teams up with Marvel. Seemed like a Ooh. kind of a Mike D mm-hmm. book, but very space opera and uh oh nice very interesting so whatever that is, one's good is planet x involved yep groot confirmed is from planet x planet x it came from planet x yeah like so like everything else tons of good stuff this week it was a really really good week right uh next week we've got spider-man 25 coming out which is supposed to rock our worlds so stay tuned to see if our worlds get rocked or if they just go on as normal. <laughs> I'm guessing the latter. Yep. <laughs> Toodles, everyone. First Issue Club is edited and produced by Mike DeStacy, Greg Licktig, and Andy Vargas. Follow us on social media at First Issue Club. And check out our Patreon for videos, audio, and more at patreon.com slash first issue club.